Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke a small brisket. Now to get started, we're gonna set our barbecue up. Whatever barbecue you're using, set it up for some indirect, low and slow style cooking. But today, we're gonna to be using the Oklahoma Joe's Blackjack Kettle with the slow and sear attachment. All right, so we're gonna open our lid and then we'll take out our cooking grate. Then we'll fill our charcoal basket up with either lump charcoal or briquettes. And now we wanna get our briquettes going. So in one side, we're just gonna bury in a couple of fire lighters and get them going. All right, so we've got about 10 minutes before those briquettes are gonna be ready. So we'll use that time to have a look at our brisket, we'll trim it and then we'll season it. All right, so we've got our beautiful little brisket here. This is the little flat piece we took off of our competition brisket video. It's around a kilo's worth. It doesn't really need too much trimming. I'm just gonna knock a little bit off the top here. The underside's pretty good. I might just square up this thin end as well. Now that's about as far as I'll go with the trimming. This little one didn't need too much at all. Now, if you're planning on smoking a small brisket like we are today, I recommend spending the extra few dollars on getting a high quality piece of meat as opposed to the cheap lean stuff you find in supermarkets. For example, this piece here would be around $30 to $40. It's got plenty of intramuscular fat being wagyu. It's gonna stay a lot juicier as opposed to the stuff you find in the supermarket that is super lean and really prone to drying out. I would much rather pay $30 to $40 for a higher quality piece that will get me better results as opposed to $15 to $20 on a supermarket piece that is very, very prone to drying out. You'll find smoking brisket at any size. Obviously, the higher quality the brisket, the better results you'll get. So now our little brisket is trimmed up. Let's season it. All right, so we're just going to give it a light coat in yellow mustard. That's just going to help bind our rubs. And then if you've got a favorite rub, go ahead and use that. But we're going to be using a combination of our steak shooter and the new beef rub I'm working on. All right, now our little brisket's trimmed and seasoned. Let's have a look at this barbecue. All right, so as you can see, our fire lighters have burnt out. Our briquettes have caught light nicely. So what we can do now is we'll shut our lid and we'll make sure our top and bottom vents are wide open. All right, so we're gonna give our barbecue five to 10 minutes to preheat. We want that to fall just below our temperature we wanna be smoking at, which for this cook is gonna be around the 225 Fahrenheit or 108 Celsius mark. I like to smoke these smaller briskets a bit lower and slower. It just gives that connective tissue and fat a bit more time to break down properly. So while our barbecue's preheating, I've just got a beautiful chunk of cherry from natural smoke. If you've got another favorite smoking wood for beef, then go ahead and use that. Being a small piece of meat, I'm only gonna be using one small chunk like so. But for now, I'm gonna wait until this barbecue is ready and we'll come back to get this brisket on. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We've got some beautiful clear smoke, just about at our target temperature. So we'll open our lid, fill our water pan up with some boiling water. That's just really gonna help keep our temperatures stable. Then we'll put our cooking grate on. We'll get our beautiful chunk of cherry straight over the top where the fire's burning. And then we'll get our beautiful little brisket on. Then we'll shut our lid and let this brisket smoke away. All right, so our barbecue temperature obviously dropped while we had that lid open. So I'm just gonna continue to leave both of our vents wide open. And once we get just below that temperature we wanna be at, I'm gonna start closing that bottom vent down. And like I said before, for this cook, we're gonna run our barbecue at around that 225 Fahrenheit or 108-ish Celsius. So we're gonna let this brisket go for a couple of hours. And in the first hour of this cook, all I'm gonna be worrying about is getting this barbecue stable. As always, we're gonna leave our top vent completely open and we're just gonna control our temperature using that bottom vent. If we need to increase our temperature, we're gonna open our bottom vent up. If we need to decrease, then we'll shut it down a bit. If you wanna learn a bit more about fire management in a kettle style barbecue, I'll put a link down in the video description for you to check out. But for now, we're gonna let this brisket smoke away and we'll come back once we're a bit further into this cook. All right, so our brisket's been going for a bit over two hours now. Let's have a look at it. All right, so it's looking nice. That bark's looking good. We'll have a check of our internal. About that 165 Fahrenheit or 74 ish Celsius. I just want that bark to come along a little bit more and then we'll wrap this up. So we'll check back in in around half an hour to 45 minutes. All right, so we're just about ready to wrap this brisket. I've just got a tablespoon worth of beef tallow there. We'll let that melt down for a few minutes and we'll come back to wrap this up. All right, let's get this brisket out, put it down on our foil here. Now you can either use butcher's paper, you can wrap it completely in foil, but we're gonna boat this one to finish it off. Then we'll pour over our beef tallow. 
and we'll get our brisket back in. All right, so our little brisket's gonna go back into our barbecue until it's probing tender around the 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius internal mark. So if you've got a meat probe, feel free to chuck one in, but I think we're still gonna be one to two hours away from this being ready. So we'll check back in a bit later into this cook. All right, so our little brisket has been in the boat for about an hour and a half. So we're gonna have a probe around. And just for reference, the brisket spent about three hours unwrapped. And like I said, about an hour and a half in the boat. We're at about 210-ish Fahrenheit internal. We're about 99-ish degrees Celsius. It's probing really nice and tender. There's plenty of juice in that foil, so I'm happy to get this out. And as we normally do, we're gonna let our brisket sit out and steam off for a few minutes just to stop that cooking process, and then we're gonna rest it. Now, how long you want to rest your brisket is up to you. I like to rest my briskets for at least an hour, and you've got a range of options depending on how early your brisket's done and when you want to serve it. For a small one like this, after it's steamed off, I'm just gonna loosely cover it back over with foil, then I'm gonna rest it in an esky. Now, resting a brisket in an esky is gonna keep it hot for hours, especially if you sort of preheat your esky by pouring some boiling water in it, and then pouring it out before you put your brisket in there. You can add some old towels for insulation, or you can also rest your brisket in an oven set at about 70 degrees Celsius. So there's a few options there depending on how early your brisket is ready and when you wanna serve it. But for now, we'll come back once this brisket's had a rest to slice and serve it. All right, our brisket's had a nice little rest. Let's cut it open and see how we went. She's juicy. She pulls apart with ease. Let's have a taste. Oh, that's awesome. It's got great bark, plenty of moisture in there, nice and tender. That's a great little brisket. So there you go. As you can see, that turned out to be a great brisket. Awesome bark, awesome flavor nice and juicy, everything you could want in a brisket. It was about a four and a half hour cook in total. So give it a shot yourself. And like I said earlier, definitely spend those extra few dollars on a better quality piece of meat and you'll get much better results. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. That's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.